Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your fourth stimulus package and news update. We have a lot of news to get into in today's video, but first, if you would like to receive two free stocks from Webull valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. Okay, so the White House recently announced that due to supply chain bottlenecks, many Americans may be facing much higher prices or empty shelves this Christmas season. I'm sure most of us have read the book or seen the movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Well, this year, some families may be asking themselves, did the White House steal Christmas? Here is the White House press secretary being asked if Biden will be the one blamed for possible holiday shopping issues. In summary of this, you know, presidents get blame or credit for a whole range of things that they may not have direct control over. Is yeah. there a sense in the White House here that the president could be blamed for a frustrating holiday season or shopping season if these goods don't flow. Is that a, an active concern that's motivating some of these steps? Uh, well, I think, Kelly, what's motivating some of these steps is the president wants to get uh, ensure the American people are able to uh, order goods, they're able to get toys delivered to their home, they're able to go to the grocery store and uh, and be able to afford uh, meat and uh, any, any goods that they want. He understands, and we all understand, that uh, daily costs, as much as wages have gone up, as much as unemployment has gone down, as much as a lot of progress has been made on the economy, he understands these are issues that are impacting people in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, I also, in, in response to an earlier question, you know, we can't over-promise here, and I'm not going to do that from here because there are a lot of issues in the global supply chain. Uh, we knew that from the first day. That's why he set up this task force. That's why this has been a top priority, and we've been attacking those issues one by one uh, because we know they have different challenges and different solutions. So no guarantees are made, but they remain hopeful that maybe come holiday shopping season, things may get a tad bit better. Oh, and other than holiday buying issues, we as a country are also facing a great amount of inflation as well. Compared to last September, inflation has been up 5.4%, which is the highest rate in 13 years. In September alone, prices rose by 0.4%, which is up from the 0.3% gain in August. Where are Americans seeing the greatest amount of inflation, you ask? Well, rental cars are the highest at 43% since last September, gas comes in at second at 42%, used cars are at 24%, bacon, yes bacon at 19%, hotels at 18%, beef at 18%, pork 13%, eggs, TVs at 13%, kids shoes at 12%, furniture 11%, new cars at 9%, chicken and apples at 8%, restaurant prices at 5%, electricity at 5%, and rent at nearly 3%. So yes, things indeed aren't looking too pretty. For people on low or fixed incomes, actually, this is an absolute disaster. If there is any silver lining in all of this, I guess it would be that Americans on Social Security benefits will see the highest cost of living adjustments since 1982, receiving a 5.9% increase in their payments. Of course, it's not that they'll really be coming out ahead by receiving this increase. Simply put, they will only be in a slightly better situation than before. For months now, we've heard the Biden administration say that inflation is only transitory and that it should slow down in the next few months. Well, now they're saying, well, it's probably going to slow down at some point next year. Well, they hope anyway. Uh, two quick subjects. First, uh, with today's consumer prices report and President Biden's pending choice about leadership of the Federal Reserve, how patient is this administration with inflation consistently running above the Fed's 2% target? Well, as you know, Josh, from following this closely, we obviously uh, defer to the Federal Reserve and their projections and official targets, which they make regularly. I would note uh, that uh, we've seen a decrease over the course of time, and that is still evident if you look month to month over with the data that came out this morning. So between the second quarter and third quarter of this year, monthly inflation increases have actually decelerated by 50 percent. And just to give you more specific data points, it was around 0.8 percent, and then it went down to 0.4 percent, hence 50 percent. So. We think this decrease um, reflects uh, the view of the Federal Reserve, continues to be, uh, and many Wall Street forecasters, which continue to predict 
project that inflation is expected to continue to decelerate in 2022 and beyond as we come out of the pandemic. Uh, so it's not about patience to us. Uh, we certainly understood and knew uh, that when we were coming in, when the president was coming into office uh, and he was coming in at a time where we needed to turn the economy back on, where he was coming in at a time where uh, unemployment was high, uh, where wages were down, demand was down, which as you know, you have once you build up when demand increases, that can re, uh, re, re, uh, result in an increase in prices, um, that over time, as the economy is turning back on, we'd see some of these transitory effects. That's what we, that's what's been predicted. Uh, that's what we are, have been planning for. Uh, and of course, next year, we expect it to come down as, as outside forecasters are projecting. Okay. So to the White House, it's all about patience. Well, Sadly, many Americans can't afford to have patience because if you're a congressional lawmaker earning $174,000 per year, paying 42% more in gas probably isn't too big of a deal, but to the average American, this is a huge deal. Okay, so in some other news, as Democratic lawmakers work towards passing the two major bills currently going on in Congress, the bipartisan bill and the reconciliation package, Ed Markey recently praised House progressives for holding the line in order to get reconciliation passed. Um, thanks to all my congressional partners who are, are joining here this evening, because right now, the fate of climate action is in our hands. And I cannot overstate this enough. This is the moment to pass the most consequential climate and economic legislation in generations. The two pieces of legislation, the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the budget reconciliation package would make historic investments in our country's physical and human infrastructure. They are Joe Biden's Build Back Better agenda. And we cannot build back better unless we build back greener. Our workers and families need both of these bills to pass together. That is the deal. And that is the best deal for our country. Uh, and that's why we're so proud of Pramila and all of the progressive Democrats in the House for holding the line, uh, because there's been a lot of talk recently about what progressive lawmakers need to be willing to cut what we have to be willing to negotiate on. Well, we cannot negotiate with deadly wildfires. They don't negotiate. We cannot negotiate with massive hurricanes. They don't negotiate. We cannot negotiate with floodwaters, sea level rise, droughts, temperature rise, and we cannot negotiate how much these climate fuel disasters are costing us. With progressive Democrats unwilling to pass the infrastructure bill in the House without first reaching an agreement on reconciliation, some moderates are now beginning to get a bit upset. And at this point, with less than three weeks to pass both of the bills, at least according to Pelosi's recent timeline, it doesn't seem like they're making too much progress. We've heard the House Speaker one day saying that they're going to cut some of the programs in the reconciliation package, but fund them extremely well. Then the following day comes around and she says she wants to keep all the programs in the reconciliation package, but fund them for fewer years. So it doesn't seem like they really know what to do as Democrats remain divided on how to deal with the reconciliation spending. In the end, will they ever end up reaching a deal? Well, that's going to be entirely up to Senators Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema, and the House Progressive Democrats. With that said, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think that they will ever end up reaching an agreement? But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple of free stocks from Webull, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. To receive the first stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interested in investing or continuing to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks that you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money is completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day, and I'll see you, as always, in the next video.